So Rocky and I get around the world and uh, interview lots of innovators and, and we try to find out where the world of business is going. And of course, every business in the world really needs a website. And that's how you're going to get your customers and, and have your face to the world. Well, what's going on in web development? I mean, I got, when I got into the world of web, I hadn't coded my websites and used front page. I mean, of all things, uh, that dates me a little bit. But now we're uh, into the world of Drupal and WordPress and other things, and we're going to find out what that world looks like to the guy who runs Pantheon. And uh, Pantheon's uh, helping a lot of enterprises get onto the web and get their teams going and stuff like that. We're going to find out more about it right now. Who are you? I'm Zach Rosen. I'm the CEO and founder of Pantheon. Uh, so we built the platform. It makes it a lot easier for uh, businesses and enterprises to build and run websites. Yeah. You're helping lots of people uh, get onto the Drupal side of things, right? There's other, other methodologies yeah. like WordPress or whatnot. Uh, and lots of, I mean, I was just at uh, Prismatic. They're using Clojure. I mean, there's lots of ways to get on the web today. Yes. Right? There are literally thousands of different ways to build a website. Um, still to this day. And we think that the bar is uh, pretty low. I mean, obviously, business software is moving to cloud services. That's just the truism. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the, the bar, and the bar is being set by SaaS services, Salesforce, Google Apps, you name it. And the gulf between what those services do and what people see managing their website is just growing. Yeah. Um, and that's our mission, is to close that gap in a very real way. We want to bring website development and running websites for businesses to the modern era of cloud services. Yeah, it, you know, back when I built websites, uh, we hand coded them or used tools like uh, Hot Dog or Front Page, which are gone now, right? Which turn into like, uh, I guess, InDesign uh, yeah. and Eclipse and all sorts right. of tools. Uh, you're you're for the Drupal world. Why? First of all, why would some a, a team choose Drupal over some other well, yeah, uh, methodology? For, I mean, and just for some context, eighty percent of the world's websites or so still don't use a content management system at all. Wow. Um, and of the ones that use a CMS, clearly Drupal and, and uh, WordPress, and there's a few others that have some serious market share or really standardizing things. Um, so that yeah, the age of not using a CMS we think is is coming to pass. But now it's really a question of how how are you actually going to build your website and how are you going to run it at scale and how are you going to make that really easy and maintainable and at the you know at the same level that running cloud services are. Yeah. And it, just having WordPress or Drupal or a CMS alone is not enough. You have you know typically what businesses are doing. Um, even when they're choosing a CMS, is they're getting a server and they have to hire a system administrator and software developers, and it becomes this big project. And particularly the if you're in an enterprise, yeah. you have dozens of people. Yeah. Working on a website. Well, yeah. I mean, a typical enterprise will have literally thousands of websites. This is something people don't actually see, think about very much. But if you're if you're a Cisco or you're a UC Berkeley or you know, any large organization, every product line, every department. Uh, you'll, you know, pretty soon you'll have dozens, if not a hundred, website developers on staff. You'll have hundreds, or in some cases, thousands of uh, websites on all different systems, all different CMS systems, and be spending tens, or you know, in some cases, you know, twenty, thirty million dollars a year uh, building these websites, running and operating them, and it's kind of a mess. And and, it's been a mess. And it, also. It, it, uh, if you're trying to do that uh, and you're doing it poorly, you're having to keep your, uh, your, your staging environments going and figuring out how to right. do version controls and how, how yes. to make teams work together and so totally. they don't overwrite. Well, well, software development best practices are not easy. Um, and it's actually a pretty different skill set from the skill set of building and designing and, and running websites. So we, what we find are professional website develop, developers, they really want to focus on business requirements, design, the user experience, and the implementation. And all the system administration work, the, the, the development, staging, production environments, deployment scripts, um, systems engineering work, um, it's really a different world. It's, it yeah. you know, comes from the IT and the, the systems engineering world. And those kind of Venn diagrams of skill sets don't overlap very much. Yeah. And that's been my our personal experience, right? We got into this doing consulting work for companies that were running these big deployments. And we basically built them the same thing 20 times over. It was their development infrastructure and the production infrastructure and all the tools to do the deployment. And they would spend, in some cases, a million dollars on this stuff on a one-off basis. Yeah. Um, and we got kind of bored building it and decided to do it as a service. One reason to move things to CMS is 
hey, people are going to get Google Glass next year, right? And they already have smartphones and iPads and tablets, and then they have still have regular desktops. And right. Those desktops go from big to small. Right. And so it's not 1994 anymore. When, no. when I coded my websites, I only had to worry about 800 by 600 screens. <laughs> that yeah. was it. I didn't have to worry about what, what totally. kind of screen is my content going to have to be on. You know. Completely. So I think there's you take a step back. Right. There's two things going on here. Uh, one, there's literally four billion people that are coming online. You know, going to be using the internet. Yeah. And in, in the modern era, in, in this generation, each one of those potentially is a customer of your company. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, and the primary way you're going to convert them to be a customer of your company is your website. It's just the way it's done. Yeah. Uh, and so Along we think, with some YouTube <laughs> well, you can, and some Facebook, well, and some, well, I think those which are, all points to your yes, website. Yes, exactly. Right? Right? Where does it point to? Right? You're, these social platforms are amazing for spreading and seeding content and getting your brand and your fingers out there in the world, but you've got to send people someplace right, that represents you. That's your website. And it's, yeah. It will be your website now. It will be your website in the future. So uh, we think it's a, it's a really important, it's a critical function for modern businesses to, to invest in, um, and it's, it's only growing in importance. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the requirements for your website need to do. That requirement list actually gets longer each year. Yeah. I mean, the, two years ago, what was added to that list was work on any size screen, whether it's this, you know, your mobile phone or your tablet or your computer or a big monitor. It has to be able to fit and respond to that screen. That's actually hard. Yeah. That's not an easy thing. Uh, and, and next year, it'll be, it'll be another thing. And so this list of requirements keeps growing. People keep spending more time you know, meeting the needs of that, that, that requirement list with you know, basically software development fixes. Yeah. Um, and no one, we, what we found and why we got into this is really no one was tackling these kind of core problems, the core problem sets of building and running websites at scale. Um, they were all kind of like, you know, biting off little pieces around the edges. The other thing, reason to use a CMS is, uh, you know, like at Rackspace, we have a team of marketing people who are doing content for the website. Then we have a team of de designers who are doing logos and yep. you know, making the website look nice. And then there's some programmers who are making it all work. Totally. Right? And they all have to work together. Yes. And if you're not on a CMS, your content probably is mushed together with some code. And so right. do you really want a content guy like me going in right. and messing with a page and messing with the code? Totally. I mean, it, you know? uh, so I... Because you can really screw up a website yeah. if you change just a CMS file or, or, yeah. or a CSS file, I'm sorry, or, you know, and it's really easy if you're in the code to mess it up, right? It's yeah, Before Pantheon, uh, my business partners and I... Uh, we started a consulting company building websites for companies like Rackspace, you know, design development. Uh, and so we, we were involved in this process literally three, four, five hundred times. And it was, it, you know, building and designing a website is, is one of these things that a company or a nonprofit will do that touches every part of the organization. Yeah. Right? Everyone has a stake in your website. Because it's, if you think about it, it's literally the presence of your company on the internet. So everything that you do and you think about and you, you stand for as a company has to be embodied in your website. That's why you have to get all, everyone involved in that process. Now, it, most of the people who decide on technology for running websites are developers, right? So, yes. So now we should switch to talking totally. to just developers and geek out a little bit. Totally. But because uh, the CTO or you know or uh, there's a, lots of influencers. You know, like content right. people are going to be, hey, I got to yes. make it easy for me to put content in here. I, I, I don't want to write in Eclipse. Yes. <laughs> you know? Completely. So developers can't completely choose whatever they right. want. They have to sort of work with other people. But developers generally are the ones who, who yeah. decide on a technology choice, like a WordPress versus a Drupal. Totally. Right? I mean, the, the pattern is that your marketing organization will decide what the website needs to do. Yeah. And then the website developers will choose how it's implemented. Um, and that's when you get to a decision of, of uh, if you use Drupal or WordPress or in where it's run. And for when the de de developer team starts picking new technology and starts going, oh man, we need a CMS, they're probably looking at a bunch of different things. Uh, one, wh what methodology do they use? Do they go WordPress or Drupal or something else? And then do they host their own servers? Mm -hmm. How do they do staging? Right. How do they uh, roll in all this stuff from right. that's dis you know that's hand coded from years and years and years and roll it back into the totally. into the new CMS? So how do they translate it and put it in? And I, so th tear that apart. How, how, yeah. do, how does somebody well, decide on on 
why, why pick you, I guess, is the question. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know. it's, a re it's a really good question, it's a, and it's a totally fair question. So, so we uh, have a, a kind of a number of key tenants that we think about as we build a platform. So one of the key tenants is we, we try very, very hard to make the best practices in website development the easy way to do it. Yeah. Uh, what we find is website development is always done on, under the gun. You always have you know, two months to do six months of work. And so the first thing that gets thrown out the window are software development best practices, like development stage and, and live deployment systems and backup systems, all that kind of stuff. So we've, uh, what we've done with the platform, because it's all run as a service that we can manage and, and we work on every day, we, we make updates to it, is we, we built those facilities as a part of the experience of using Pantheon, and we made it really easy to follow those, those best practices, which saves a lot of time. And what we find is that work, that kind of like system administration work to do that scripting and deployment, number one, it's actually kind of tricky. And it's, kind of, it's the kind of work that you do under pressure, like when you launch your website or you, you have a big media event. It's, it's, you, there's a, a lot of external pressure to get it right. Um, and it's kind of boring rote work. It's kind of grunt work. And so what we find is tools like software is really good at those kind of problems. Right? We can build a bulletproof system that makes deployment and, and version control and software development practices really easy, and then you just don't have to worry about it, and you can focus on building your website, which is what you want to do anyways. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, you have a website here that was yeah. built in uh, Pantheon, and then let's look at some of those best practices. What, what, what changes when you get into Pantheon? Right, so our website, uh, funnily enough, runs on our, our own service, so it's a Drupal site. And you have about a thousand customers now who are using. Pantheon. We have twenty thousand sites running on the service. We've been online for about a year, uh, and we run, to our knowledge, the single largest Drupal infrastructure in the world. We have one big platform that runs all twenty thousand sites, and we can scale customers up from tiny websites doing hundred pages a month to we have some customers doing hundred million pages a month. And the only difference between them is literally how we provision them resources and software. Um, so yeah, this is our website, and if you're a, a developer. Uh, we actually make the, the tool set everything you need to build Drupal sites free. So uh, we don't want the developers to have to think about the payment. We just want to enable them to build sites. So you can just click this button, create free account. You can be up and running in about 10 seconds, and you'll see everything we'll demo today. So uh, this is my dashboard. You can just create a free account. You'll be in here in, in 10 seconds. Anyone can register. It's totally free. Uh, and I have two sites on my uh, demo account here. One I just spun up about a minute ago um, for you, and the other is uh, for a meetup group, and these we, are both Drupal We should sites. talk about it, the fees. It, it, trying it as free, a uh, small, small startup website might be $25 Yeah, it starts at $25 a month. a month for live sites, and it can go up from there depending on your requirements. If uh, Rackspace used it, what would Rackspace pay? Yeah, we our have a our enterprise... Uh, Plan started about fifteen hundred dollars a month, but it comes with an SLA agreement and twenty four seven support and the things that an enterprise needs. But we have a lot of folks that are using twenty five dollar plans, hundred dollar plans. It depends on how much traffic and what your requirements are. Got it. So I'm in the Pantheon dashboard, um, and here's the lay of the land. So you have a development uh, version of your site, uh, which I can just click here and open up. It's just a Drupal seven site, just blank, um, and we have a testing version of the site. Uh, which is a whole other Drupal site, and you get these out of the box. So right. as soon as you spin it up, you get three versions, dev, test, and live, uh, which is the best practice for building and, uh, and developing sites. Um, so here on my code screen, um, what I'm seeing here is a listing of all the recent changes, all the recent code commits to my, my site, made by myself and uh, Josh. Uh, and, and so you didn't need to set up GitHub or no, Git or anything nothing. like that or yeah. figure out how to do a revision system? No, or you spin it up. This is Everything you see here is what you get. You get it in 10 seconds. Okay. Um, and we've done a ton of things behind the scenes to make it really, really easy. Okay. Um, so this is the main, the main screen you'll see. And I'll show you how we can make code changes in a little bit. And you can have a team working on this, right? Yeah, exactly. You hit the team tab here. And it's myself and uh, Josh. Uh, and I can add my uh, colleague Scott here. Let's add him at Pantheon. And then as soon as he's added, he'll see everything that I see. So if Scott changed the CSS file, which is the, the design of the site, what happens? What, so I would does literally- Does it track? Do, do you yeah. get a message saying, hey, somebody's messaging totally. your design? Totally. Great example. So over here, you'll notice that I have an FTP client um, already set up. Um, now, we, we track all changes to your site in version control. That's the best practice for doing website development. 
But one of the things we wanted to do is make it really easy to use version control. Because um, sometimes your theme developer uh, might not want to learn all the intricacies of Git. It's a, it's a whole other skill set. So what they can do over here um, is use their FTP client, or this could be a you know, Dreamweaver, it could be anything, just an IDE, and you can edit the files. And I, I have my code here, and my code, you know, you can see I'm, I've mounted my uh, Drupal site on yeah. Pantheon. I'm going to edit this file, it's just hello.txt, hello from Scoble Studio. Go save that. And it's, we have a little bit of magic over here. So I, it, Pantheon actually noticed that I changed the file uh, on my site. And I can click here and I can see what that change is. I can actually get a, a diff of the, uh, the code that I changed. That's my change to the, the text file. And I can, because I'm using version control, I can just make a commit message here. Changed the text file. And this you know, could be a CSS change. I could be adding a Drupal module. It could be anything. And I'm going to commit that to the, uh, the repo automatically in the dashboard. And then if Scott, uh, you know, maybe he's the project manager for the site, the site that I'm building, he'll see that change show up in the dashboard in a couple seconds. Um, and so that, you know, cool. a lot of what we do is try to make the, the process and the teamwork and the collaboration of building sites really, really easy. And if we can you know, add 5%, 10% um, you know, savings in time by uh, uh, making these best practices easy, that can really add up. That can make a big difference to these, these organizations. Uh, and you could have departmental websites, so like, uh, like, hey, Rocky and I have Building 43, which is really underneath Rackspace's totally. web infrastructure, but um, can, can uh, the web team give us access to that and lock us out of Rackspace.com or the, the main website? Yeah, totally. So uh, it's a really good question. So what we find at large organizations like Rackspace or one of our customers is UC Berkeley, uh, they don't have a website, right? Yeah. They have literally hundreds of websites, UC Berkeley, 700 websites. Majority of them are already on Drupal. Um, and they were one of our earliest customers. So they're actually moving all uh, 600 Drupal websites to Pantheon. That'll take a couple years, right? So it's a pretty serious undertaking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what happens. They, they literally have probably 50 or 100 people on staff who build these websites for all the different departments, ucberkeley.edu or you know, any, anything in between. Um, and what we've given them is a platform where they can tell all of their uh, UC Berkeley website developers, just you, know, you can use Pantheon, you can sign up, you can create sites and then launch them on the service. And when you spin up a site actually in UC Berkeley Pantheon, it has a UC Berkeley branding, it signs on with their single sign-on system, it's all set up for them as, a, as an institution. So uh, yeah, and you know, that's the kind of thing we can do for, for pretty large companies. Very cool. Um, what else does a developer need to know to uh, maybe uh, compare this against other systems well, that they might be looking at using. Totally. So we try to make that easy, right? So it's one of the main reasons we've uh, let people create uh, test sandbox accounts for free, right? We really want developers to be able to sign up for Pantheon and use it and really evaluate it. Because developers, for good reason, um, you know, they're going to be opinionated and they're going to want to see that it works, right? They're yeah. not going to want to rely on the marketing campaign to, you know, to, to persuade them. Um, so yeah, you can literally sign up, you can, you can use it, you can develop your site on it, and up until the moment, literally the, the, the second you want to take your site live, it's totally 100% free. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that's, that's actually, we, two thirds of our customers um, or more um, come to us, they're actually professional website developers, consultants who build websites for a living. Um, and so they're signing up for Pantheon, trying it out, and then if they like it, they'll start using it for real life sites and, and that's how the, the company's growing. Now, where, where does this get deployed? Do you, do you guys have a, a big data center somewhere? Or a, a, ah. how, <laughs> how does it get deployed and then where is it? Rackspace. Oh, you're on Rackspace. Yeah. Awesome. We, we uh, run a few hundred servers on the Rackspace cloud. So we're, we're very happy Rackspace customers. Um, but from our customers- So you can scale it up if-, if Well, if well here's, I, the, here's the magic, right? If I'm building the Olympics website for three years from now, I- Totally. Well, well the, we've- uh, invest a huge amount of time and energy building an infrastructure that can scale your website behind the scenes 100% in software. So this is one of the major differences between us and other companies out there that work with Drupal and, and WordPress. Uh, we don't scale by the server. Uh, Twitter doesn't scale necessarily by the server. Google, Salesforce, like internet scale yeah. companies aren't literally putting every little piece of, the, of, of their uh, customer base on its own virtual machine or its own independent cluster. What they've built and what we've built 
are network services that run all of the resources required uh, to run a Drupal site um, as a centralized service. Yep. So you have one big platform that runs all 20,000 Pantheon sites. And the magic of this is that we can scale people up really smoothly in software. We can take you from 100 pages a month, there's some of our customers, like that's all the traffic they get, they're a tiny little business, to 100 million pages a, a, a month. We had a customer launched uh, the New Republic not long ago. They got 100 million pages in the first day. Wow. Um, and the only difference between them and our tiny customers is literally the resources they're provisioned in software, which can take seconds. Yeah. So you you take care of the hard work. Yeah, of we do all of that. Scaling up and down. Totally. And and we have this handy little graph on our website. So <laughs> here is how we uh, how we see it. So in the in the old days, you know, you would be responsible for you know everything in running your website: the server, the operating system, the whole lamp stack if you're using Drupal or WordPress, um, scaling your website, developer tools. What we want to do is make it so all of that stuff goes away and you can put all of your energy in building and running your website and that's it. And we just we just take care of everything else. It's really cool. Um, tell me a little bit about your company. How is it funded and how, how many employees what, and what there's, kind of company are you building behind yeah, the scenes? Yeah, so there's, there's uh, 20 of us. Uh, we started a little over two years ago. We launched a service March last year at DrupalCon. So it's been a little over a year. Uh, we uh, were venture backed. Our first advisors and investors were the three founders of Heroku. Very cool. Um, and our first uh, investor, Steve Anderson at Baseline. He's the he was the first investor in Instagram, so he's pretty famous now. Yeah. He's awesome. But he's also the first investor uh, in Heroku, so he really knows the platform space very well. And our Series A investor is uh, Foundry, which we love those guys. They're they're awesome. I don't know if you've met them, but yep. they're tremendous. Uh, investors and really good partners. Very cool. So we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have pretty big ambitions, right? We want to run 20, 30, 40% of the, the, the world's you know, business websites or nonprofit websites. Um, and that, that's a long-term thing. That's not something we'll do in a year or two. That's, that's uh, you know, we're, we're building kind of piece by piece, uh, but so far it's good. No, it's, it's awesome. Um, any last thing that we should talk about that, that developers need to know to maybe uh, check I, I would out? say go use it. Okay. Right? <laughs> Proof in the pudding. So if you're a website developer, if you're interested in Drupal or you, you used Drupal before, go submit up a site on the service, try it out. If you, uh, if you like it or you have any questions, feel free to email me or our, our staff are pretty responsive. So. Very cool. Thank you. Where do we uh, try it? Pantheon. Get Pantheon.com. Get Pantheon.com. Get Pantheon.com. Very cool. Thank you cool. so much for coming out and showing yeah, Thank me. you.